Hello everyone and welcome to the fourth lecture in the series Python Intermediate to Expert. In this lecture, we'll be talking about lambda functions and list comprehension. So what are lambda functions? A lambda function is a small anonymous function. A lambda function can, own, can take any number of arguments but can only have one expression. And you'll have to be very careful of this line here. The syntax for lambda functions is this. You have to write the word lambda space and then the arguments you wish to provide colon space space is not necessary and then the expression which you want to compute. The expression is then executed and the results are returned in whichever variable you want to store it to. Okay, so I have written a couple of small programs to demonstrate the lambda function functionality. So the first program adds 10 to the number passed in as argument and prints the result. So here I have written a lambda function which takes one argument a and then adds this argument, adds 10 to this argument and then I'm printing this result. Okay, so as you can see, I have written this over here in item. So I have written two other programs and I'll show you those. So the second program is a lambda function with multiple arguments. So here again, I am creating a lambda function and storing it to a variable a x, sorry, but it has two uh, arguments a and b and the expression is a multiplied by b. So when I write print parenthesis x parenthesis 5 comma 6, the function will compute 5 multiplied by 6, which is 30. Then the next lambda function I have is simply to add three numbers. So lambda space a comma b comma c colon a plus b plus c will return the result of a plus b plus c and store it in the variable x. So when I write print parenthesis x parenthesis 5 comma 6 comma 2, it will add all these three variables together, these three values together to give me the output and I should expect 13 as the output. So as you can see, I have written, I have written these three lambda functions over here. Now let's test this. So yeah, the first line of output is 15, sorry, which is 10 plus 5. The next is 30, which is 5 multiplied by 6. And the last is 13, 5 plus 6 plus 2. Okay, so why should we use a lambda functions? It looks needlessly complex. The power of lambda functions are better shown when you use them as anonymous functions inside another function and not just straight away. So let's say if you have a function myfunc with a lambda expression inside it. And this just multiplies the argument of the function with the argument of the lambda expression. And now if you have two variables, my doubler and my tripler, and you give them values of my func parenthesis two and my func parenthesis three, then you can simply call print my doubler parenthesis 11 and print my tripler parenthesis 11. So what this will do is it will, the first print statement over here will double the value of 11 and the second print statement will triple the value of 11. But if you simply use a lambda function, and here I am writing a lambda function with two arguments a and b. And again, I'm just multiplying those two to return the result and store it in the variable x. And here I'm initializing two variables, my doubler and my tripler, the same variables again, with the values x parenthesis 11 comma 2, x parenthesis 11 comma 3. So this will actually do the same, but as you can see, this is a much smaller program with lambda functions. So as you can see, I have written the same program over here. So we should expect two lines to a couple of same output. So if I run this, so yeah, 22 and 33 and 22 and 33. 22 and 33 is from the simple my func my doubler and my triple and 22 and 33 from this lambda function. Great. 
Now let's talk about list comprehension. List comprehension is a very elegant way to define and create lists which are based on existing lists. The syntax for the same is open and close square brackets and inside of that the expression. And this, the last part for item in list is very important otherwise it won't be a list comprehension at all. The expression which you write is evaluated on each item in the list and the re result is written as a list. The clever thing about it is that the list comprehension method can detect when it receives a string or a tuple as input and not a list. But it will also work on it like a list and it won't complain, it won't give any error to you. Okay, so here I am iterating through a string by using a simple for loop. What we want to do is we want to separate the letters of the word Python and add the letters as items to a list. So I have written this here in item. So if we create a list called P letters, it's a blank list initially. Then for letter in Python, what this will do is it will iterate to each letter in the string Python. I am appending that letter to my list P letters and I'm simply printing it out. But using, using list comprehension, I can do it in just two lines. I can write p letters equal to square bracket letter for letter in the string and I'm just printing it out. Keep in mind that python here is a string and not a list but string list comprehension sorry still works because it is smart enough. Sorry. So as you can see I've written the same here. Also I have just used lambda expressions to iterate through a list just for comparison purpose. So p letters here, I'm, initial, I'm initializing it to a list with the values of the map function of with the argument, with the lambda argument of x, x being the letters in the word Python, in the string Python. But keep in mind that as you can probably see that list comprehensions are more human readable than lambda functions. It was much clearer to understand what I wanted to do using list comprehensions. And I've written the same here. Okay, so now let's run the same and see what we get. So yeah, I get three sets of identical output the letters from the word python in a list which is actually what we expected okay moving on surprisingly you can also use if conditions inside list comprehensions so here if we want to only get the even numbers from 0 up till 20 we can do it in this way we can write the name of the variable equal to square brackets x for x in range 20 and then the if condition if x modulus 2 is equal to 0 equal equal to 0 here we are using two equal to signs because we are comparing two values and modulus means remainder so if x divided by 2 has the remainder 0 is what the statement over here means and then i'm just printing it out okay so as you can see, I've written it here in atom. You can also use nested if conditions. So we talked about simple if conditions before, but now we can also use nested if conditions. So here the, var the variable numlist has the value y for y in range 100. So 0 to 100. If y modulus 2 is equal to 0, that means it is perfectly divisible by 2 if y modulus 5 equal to equal to 0. And that means that it is also perfectly divisible by 0. So the y will only be appended to the num list when y is divisible by both 2 and 5. As you can see, I have written the same function over here on line 4 and 5. You can also use if else and not just if. So here the object list is even if i modulus 2 is equal to equal to 0 else odd for i in range 0 to 10. 
So here list comprehension will check the 10 numbers from 0 to 9 and if i i being a number being the numbers so if i r is divisible by 2 then even will be appended to the list if not odd will be appended so seems simple enough right i have just written it out here and now let's run it and check if we were right okay so the first output we get is 0 2 4 6 8 which is the even numbers between 0 and 20. The next list is 0, 10, 20, etc. Which was the list of numbers perfectly divisible by 2 and 5 between 0 and 100. Then a list of even and odd numbers from 0 till 10. So as you can see, this also worked well. Okay, moving on. You can also use, take the transpose of a matrix using list comprehension. It sounds strange, but it works. So here I'm using, I'm trans taking the transpose using nested loops, which is a very convoluted process. I'm creating uh, an array called transport, a list called transport, transposed, initial, initially it's empty. Then I'm creating a nested list called matrix, a two dimensional nested list. Then I'm iterating, iterating through the range then matrix zero. I am then taking the transpose of each of each row and appending it to the transposed list here and printing out the same. I have written this in the atom text editor also up till line number 10. But you can also do the same using list comprehension in just three lines. So you first create the matrix of which you want to create the transpose. So here, this is the matrix, a uh, two dimensional matrix. Then you are creating a variable called transposed. And inside this variable, you have a nested list. The first, the, and each row is row square brackets i for row in matrix. So this means that it will give you turn by sequentially each row in the matrix variable for i in range 2 because it has 2 is the shape of the matrix is 2 and I'm just printing it out keep in mind that the nested loops in list comprehension don't work like normal nested loops so you might expect you might be confused as to whether how i is, is uh, initialized after calling the variable i but in the above program for i in range 2 part is actually executed before the row i for row in matrix part so thus, when this line is called, I actually has some value, a valid value. So value is first assigned to I, and then the item rated by row square brackets I is appended to the transpose variable. So here, I, from line number 12 till 14, I have actually implemented this theme. Okay, and let's run it and check. So yeah. You were actually able to get transfers using both the methods list comprehension and nested loops. So the first output is using nested loops, and the second output is using list comprehension. And if you compare it closely, the input given to list comprehension was this list, and the output from the nested loop was the same list, and also the output from then list comprehension is the input given to the nested loop. Thus, it works both ways. Okay, and that's all I had for you in this lecture. We'll meet in the next lecture where we'll talk about object-oriented programming in Python. Okay, bye.